However, the main thing I want to talk about is the bear. So I've said it, beware of the bear. So when we interact with other people, we have beliefs. We have beliefs about ourselves, beliefs about them, beliefs about the situation. And our beliefs influence our emotions. And our emotions affect what we do and say, our actions. And that obviously affects the results that we get. And it's a bit like a chain. Um, and all of this happens really quickly. As you saw in the film, the uh, father, he believes his daughter was being cheeky. He reacted emotionally, he put his foot down, and then it all, all went haywire, sort of thing. So this chain happens really quickly. And you can only stop it if you are aware of those emotions, those feelings, those physical sensations. Now, interactions. So, that brings me <coughs> back on to this thing about beliefs. And I want to say a little bit more about that before I close. So, you know, when we're in a situation, our beliefs about ourselves, our beliefs about the other person, our beliefs about the situation influence how we feel about it. And as we saw from that, that short film, you know, our emotions drive our actions. They influence what we do and say, and that influences what result we get. At the moment, I'm sort of talking about the negative side. Obviously, this works positively. This can be a positive chain reaction, positive cycle. Um, but today, I'm talking about how it works sort of with negatively. And one of the um, shared, I guess it's a universal human need to feel worthwhile about ourselves, to have a sense of self-worth. And when you interact with other people, your sense of self-worth comes from meeting your core drives <coughs> and fulfilling your beliefs. Mm. And so, for example, the in-charge mobilizers, when things are happening, whether they're doing it or someone else is doing it, they feel good. Because they're meeting, they're fulfilling that need for action. Um, the chart, the course navigators, when there's a plan and it's followed, that makes them feel great because it fulfills their need for self worth. For the behind the scenes synthesizers, um, you know, knowing that you've pulled everything together and you've got the best possible result, you feel good, don't you? And similarly, the energizers, when you've got everyone's commitment and buy in, and that's all thanks to the energy you've put in, that makes you feel good, gives you a sense of self worth. What happens when we are in meetings or in interactions with other people, of course, these core beliefs come into conflict. So, you know, my need to take time to gather information conflicts with the mobilizers' need to get things done, conflicts with the navigators' need to have a clear, clear plan, and conflicts with the energy energizers' need to involve people. So when you get into conflict with people, you exaggerate your strengths, so you tend to stick more to your own position. So the mobilizers start to be seen as um, impatient and demanding. The navigators can be seen by others as um, sort of pedantic and inflexible. The synthesizers can be seen as just procrastinating and not being assertive enough and not being decisive. And the energizers can be seen as creating a sort of chaotic, frenetic atmosphere. So our strengths, what would be our strengths normally, flip over when our sense of self-worth is threatened, they flip over into weaknesses and in, into these negative emotions and then unhelpful behaviours. And I think what interaction styles does is help us break that chain. So when it's a negative chain, the bear, you know, when it's a negative chain, beliefs, emotions, actions, results, knowing about interaction styles helps you break that chain. So if you take these two, so the mobilizer and the synthesizer, um, the mobilizer wants a quick result, it's worth the risk to go ahead, they start seeing the synthesizer as delay their beliefs about the other person, they're delaying, they're indecisive, they're unpredictable, um, the emotions they feel, they feel threatened, their sense of self-worth is threat threatened because they're not going to fulfill their core needs and their core beliefs, um, they feel frustrated, impatient, out of control. Um, their actions, they push harder. So in-charge mobilizers tend to push harder, assert, direct, confront. Um, and with the result being they end up in competition or they bulldoze things through or they do it themselves. So that's a typical, I'm sure that's not true of everyone in every situation, but that is a typical way this bare chain can work. And on the other side, the synthesizer believes that the other person is abrasive, aggressive, rash. Um, again, their self, sense of self-worth is threatened. I'm not going to meet my needs, my beliefs, they feel pressured, rushed. 
what might they do? Well, they might do nothing, they might delay, they might just be quiet. Um, and the result being, they might just accommodate or appear to accommodate, and you, you're in a lose win situation, they might submit to the other person. I could have picked any two pairs and done a similar analysis. As I said, in this case, it's mobilizer, synthesizer. This one is energizer, navigator. So the energizers want involvement, and it's, I believe it's worth the energy to get everyone involved. They start seeing the navigators. When that clashes with the navigator, they start seeing the navigators as slow, stubborn, inflexible. They feel threatened, they get frustrated, upset. What do they do? Well, they become insistent, they might conciliate, they might distract with lots of activity, with the result being they end up feeling unappreciated, and they may well compromise, but they will feel terribly happy about it. And what might the bear chain for the navigator, the child course navigators be? Um, they start to believe the other person is frenetic, intrusive, indiscriminate, their sense of self-worth is threatened because they're not going to fulfill their need to get a plan and their belief that it's worth the effort to, to get a plan. They feel derailed, distracted, they might retreat, they might be quiet, they might be defensive. In conflict they tend to avoid. If anyone's familiar with Thomas Hillman conflict style, that's what I'm using here, yeah. They might avoid, withdraw, and it might remain unresolved. So those are the, some of the ways the bear chain can work negatively. And as I said, you could do this with any sort of combination of pairs. We won't be doing this, I've got two slides left, three slides left. We won't, we won't be doing this exercise because we're out of time, but what I did want you to think about, and you might like to think about this as you're driving home or on the train, is what are the practical things you can do and say to break that negative chain um, and that to connect with a different style. So how can you break it, what's happening in yourself, your emotions, um, but also how can you adapt your behaviour to connect with the other person and help them perhaps break their, their chain. <coughs> Any questions or comments on that? <coughs> it's a good exercise. Sorry? It's a good exercise. All right, yes, thank you, Marky. I'm sorry you haven't got time to do it. <laughs> so my pearls of wisdom, be mindful that mind-body link. Be aware of what's going on in your body because that is a message about your emotions. And if you're more aware of that, you can manage your behaviour better. Be aware of your beliefs that are helping and hindering you in any particular situation. And most of our beliefs do help us, but they also cause us problems. How can you break that bear chain? Match your impact to your intention. You know, if you're not getting, having the impact you want, how can you close that influence gap um, and adapt to connect?